Hello, everybody. It's been about a month or more since I've done my last Warpath video. I am still around, and I'll be happy to say it is because I'm actually working on a super secret project that I cannot yet divulge the details to you guys on, but it is for the Warpath game. I will say shortly that I'm building some kind of Warpath platform uh, not affiliated with Lilith in any way, shape, or form, but uh, hopefully something that will be beneficial for the community. Uh, something I think is really great, something I will personally use for my alliance. But uh, anyway, enough of that. I wanted to come to talk about the fact that New York is actually really great for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is a symmetrical map. Everybody likes that about Moscow. It's also a very open map in that you can basically drive anywhere on the map. You're not restricted by the rivers or bridges or zones that don't open or safe zones that block the map. It is a truly open map. Now, the third reason that I'm really happy about is the safe zones themselves are actually smaller. On most of the maps, the safe zones are quite large. Moscow especially, I think, has some of the largest safe zones in the game. They're unnecessarily large, and the safe zones do not block, meaning that you can actually build and drive around the safe zones themselves. So I think that creates a very interesting dynamic on the map, but it's basically what everybody's been asking for is for there to be no blockage on the map whatsoever, and they absolutely delivered that with New York. Now, the last reason I like, and this might just be because the matchmaking, but it, at least for us, is using the coalition system. We have actually dropped to gold three unintentionally. Another topic for another video, but we're in a coalition with 16 alliances. This is the first time we've actually done 16. All the other coalitions we've done in gold two and gold one have been with the typical uh, or coalitions of two alliances each or yeah, two times four, right? Eight, uh, basic math. So um, anyway, everybody loves Moscow for similar reasons, but they basically took all the things that players have been praising about all the different maps and they have seemingly, seemingly incorporated that into a single map. So I personally think New York is really great for those reasons. Interestingly enough, uh, I would also say, while well, I was expecting some sort of new map specific feature, they had announced there was going to be the quote unquote generals. Um, we get basically got the new skill system, which is kind of cool and kind of unique, but it's also so subtle that I can't say I've noticed it at all, which is actually really great because that means like tactics, it's not a game breaking feature that they've introduced. So I think it's awesome. It adds a little bit of dynamic to the game. It keeps it a little bit more interesting but not so much so that it actually changes the core gameplay. So really though, the, the thing I was not expecting was actually the territory dynamic that restricts airless. I know that they put information out there about it, but until I actually played it and people really started looking into it when Conquest was starting, I didn't understand what it really was. I kind of knew that the map opened into layers, but I didn't realize that you actually couldn't airlift even into your own territory. So I think that is actually really interesting. Uh, territory war is one of the most fun aspects of the Warpath game because it creates a strategy element to it, kind of like a game of risk, not just a deathmatch style game, right? Because there's plenty of those. There's two real reasons why I really like this in New York. Number one, it creates diverse gameplay. That is really needed to keep Warpath vibrant and alive. And number two, it gives a stronger alliance a disadvantage and a losing alliance a handicap. And I really like this because I feel like it actually facilitates more gameplay. So the issue is when a strong alliance pushes deep into the territory and pushes a weaker alliance back, typically what happens is the weaker alliance can't fight back and then eventually they just give up. What this is really doing for us is it's forcing that stronger alliance. The deeper you push, meaning you safe zone the alliance next to you, and then you push past that and you go to the next one, right? So now you're really deep in the map and nobody can push you back. What this does is it then 
basically paces the match. So the stronger alliance, as you have some battles and the weaker alliance, there are times, like maybe their peak activity is able to push you back. The stronger alliance now becomes at a disadvantage because you have to drive 500 to 1,000 kilometers to get to where you're pushing. And what that does is because you can't instantly airlift, it actually gives the losing alliance getting pushed back a chance to actually push back, right? So that's, I think that's a good thing. That's going to keep that losing alliance engaged in the match more and for longer because what's really important is that teams stay engaged because they can make some kind of consistent forward moving progress, right? If they can't do that, then they're going to give up and quit. That's so I, I think this is a really great change. It's one of the biggest pitfalls of most of the Conquest maps, uh, given that once an alliance does lose, lose really hard, they give up and effectively quit and the match is over. Okay? And many matches are now won in the first 24 hours of a lot of maps. No one can dispute that. The next uh, major improvement, I think, is the commander contribution ranking. Um, historically, competitive teams track each player's fighting machine score on a spreadsheet. They track it for every conquest. A lot of other teams also do repute. They'll do deaths. They'll do power, kills, all kinds of other things. But we basically just use fighting machine. If you're not doing this for your alliance, you are not playing as a competitive alliance, I would say. The whole point of it, as everybody knows, especially for my team, is if a player scores less than a certain threshold, they get, you know, the quote unquote farm players get removed from the alliance. My alliance is really strict in that regard. We will kick our own friends from our alliance. Uh, we don't care. We are here to play and to win. And to do that, uh, you kind of have to build a hardcore team. So that's what we've done. And that's what a lot of alliances try to strive to do. I would say a lot falls short. Again, another topic for another day. But I think the contribution ranking that now includes reserve losses as an addition to reserve elimination is a really awesome thing for one major reason players that run sponge units super heavy main battle tank infantry and especially free-to-play players regardless of their play style they don't get enough credit for the effort that they put in and the losses that they take for that effort and the small amount of kills that they gain from it, okay? So Fighting Machine, just simply put, does not reflect that effort, right? It only reflects kills. So obviously Fighting Machine is a ranking for the strongest players in the battleground are naturally gonna get more kills, especially the pay players. Free to play players might put in a lot of work, whether they're running an army group or sponging bases or Maybe they're always donating troops to an army group. They're just not getting the kill numbers that the pay players and bigger players get. Now, the commander contribution ranking gives them credit because they've incorporated the reserve loss. Okay. Now, obviously, if you're getting no kills and you're only getting losses, then you would say, okay, what's the value of the player? But when you really look at a player and you understand that they are donating their troops all the time and you're using their units to sponge a base and their artillery, just out of bad luck is always the one that's getting hit first from a base. You guys know it to be true. So it's kind of cool. Now, the points being less than the points you get for kills are also a good thing because you shouldn't weigh losses as a higher value metric than kills. So I think this is really cool for Warpath because one thing that's great about Warpath is it's really rich in data. But I think they still could do a lot more. And one way I think they could do that would be by now incorporating damage done to bases and the number of bases destroyed. I've suggested this for years to Lilith, that they include these two both in, uh, they have it in battle reports, but they need to include it in the fighting machine or now commander contribution ranking. So combat drills, funny enough, is one event that already does this. Uh, it, your points, most of those points come from doing damage to bases. And it's why, for those of you that don't understand it, whales go around and kill empty, low HP, or small players. Uh, it's why they kill those bases, because they're getting combat troll points. Okay? So I think they could do more with that, and I think it would actually help matchmaking, because basically it would provide teams better tools to build better teams. 
Most teams, they just simply don't understand how to build a competitive team. So they overqualify based on player count, player power, lines power, kill count, and other metrics, only to find out that only 25% of the team are actively engaged players in the game. Okay, most teams are that way. And many teams nowadays, another topic for another video, seem to have 25 to 50% of our roster as alt accounts. And then their active roster really is only 50% of the total roster and maybe of that they have 25 percent active players so you might go into a match with 70 players but really you're playing with 15. okay so i think this would actually help but these alliances that struggle like that then they wonder why they can't kill a whale hmm. wonder why other topic for another time so overall guys i think new york is the best map design to date and despite it having some issues I think overall it's the correct direction for map design going forward.